Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. Okay, okay, everybody. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kim Bash, and we started doing these Zooms um, about nearly going on two years ago, which is just crazy that I, I can't believe it's been so long already, but we started the series called Find Me a Community in Israel because so many people were reaching out to me um, actually just before COVID saying we want to make Aliyah, but we don't know where to go. And at the time, Nefesh for Nefesh was not, the, the website with all the different communities was not very, was not updated. Baruch Hashem, they are actually doing what we're doing, what I had started to do as well, um, and researching all the different communities. But really, it was a platform for people to be able to come on and meet with locals, especially during lockdown, where people were not able to do pilot trips like they had done in the past. So this is really a platform for people to meet locals, to find out information. And I'm actually... It's, it's pretty amazing, but over the last couple of years, the last years, people have actually moved to the areas that we showcased on our series, which was pretty phenomenal. They'd never gone there. We've got people in Carmiel, Pardes Hana, in, um, where else? Um, in Efrat, like they hadn't been to some of these places. So I was very fortunate to be able to have the platform to be able to do this. And um, I connected with David and Marcy, also during this time, and they run an incredible organization, the Alia Network, which is just a support system for people coming on Alia who really want to ask questions and in a safe environment. And that's what David, David and Marcy do. And um, Marcy recently got her real estate license. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, on the phone saying, I want you on board because you have the same ideology as me. And what better, you know, just to work with people who are idealistic, who love Eretz Israel, and are just motivated to bring every Jew back to Eretz Israel, and, and basically to find the right place for everybody. And for those of you who've been on my, on my Zooms in the past, I'm really all about, yes, I run a real estate company, and I have Baruch Hashem partners and real estate brokers that I work with all over. But for me, it's much more than that. It's about, and I, and I say this, you'll read it everywhere, wherever I promote myself, a house is not just a house. A house is just, it's just four walls. But when you find your community, that's really when you find your home. And part of the reason what I think is a successful aliyah is to be able to come to a place where you're with people who are like-minded. It's going to be a soft landing. Um, you're going to have a support system. So we really try and focus on places where we see there is Anglos living there, where there's potential for housing. I'm not going to showcase on, on my platform any area in Israel where it doesn't have opportunity. So, And also we're trying to find affordable opportunities because as uh, you know, the, Israel is expensive, but there are still some very beautiful places to go that are more affordable. We're not talking about the central areas, the, the main areas like Netanya, Renana, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, which are always going to be expensive. So we're looking for other opportunities, especially people want, and I think this was also a thing with COVID, is that a lot of people want a lot of outdoor space. And um, actually, the most kinds of like real estate transactions that happened, that were in the most high demand were garden apartments and places that um, like with large outdoor spaces. It was in very, it still is in very high demand because people were spending time at home and they really wanted to be able to have some kind of outdoor area. Um, so without further ado, I am going to hand over to Marcy and David, who are going to take over hosting this call because it's all about the area that they just moved to so thank you so much for coming on thank you so much kim um we're excited to to uh, share my lot with everyone out there um we moved here about three months ago uh, we made aliyah eight years ago from new york we lived in mali Damim for eight years and um we were looking for something a little different and um, it's been three months. We actually saw Malo about 10 or 11 years ago. On our pilot trip. On our pilot trip. And it left an impression. We really liked it back then. And we just, we weren't sure. We said, we'll be New Olim up north so far. Um, and, and I'd like to jump in. What, what happened was for like the years up into Corona, we were looking throughout the center. I mean, we went to... 
Beit Shemesh and those areas. We went to Frat. We went to even around Modi'in. We went we all over. We checked out a lot of communities. And besides the fact that we just didn't feel it was right, and Marcy has to feel that it's right from her parking or whatever it is. And uh, we were really stumped. We didn't know what we wanted to do, but we did know that, you know, we were starting to get priced out in the center. It's very, very expensive, especially for what we were looking for. And I think I just said to Marcy, what about Malos? We remember we loved it there. So so we said, OK, I, we came back out here to check it out. And I said, I like it. I said, I really like it here. Um, we spent the Shabbat and the it was a last minute Shabbat that we came. We got invited on a Thursday. It was really the only Shabbat that we could do. It was Thursday afternoon and the whole community came together um, to meet us, uh, Sudashli Sheet, and it was really beautiful. The community was really welcoming and we were here two months later. We happened to just happen to find a place that we liked and one thing led to another. Uh, okay, so Malot is about uh, a 20 minute drive east of Nahariya. Nahariya is like on the, on the, on the coast, uh, just south of Lebanon. So we're pretty far up north. We're in the, the lower Galil, I would say, right? It's not, uh, yeah, we're in the Galil. And uh, it's a very foresty area. We'd like to show a video about it. I don't know if the- Not yet. Not yet? Let's we'll, we'll just- Okay. okay. Um, we will show a video about it in, soon. But um, I just want to say, also, it is up north and it is far, but it is, you know, you can drive out to Jerusalem. It's about a two hour, two and a half hour drive. It is doable, especially, you know, when you're living outside of Israel, you know how far Jerusalem was then. And now it's just, you know, it's only a, a drive away. Um, so there are a lot of benefits it's, uh, of being here. It's, it is a city, but has that small town feel, small town vibe. Everywhere we went, people were just very welcoming. Um, and um, I just want to share that being in Malot, it, there is a growing Anglo community. It is small. There are about 45 families. Um, maybe, um, maybe 45 families. And the fact that there is a smaller Anglo community, Israelis are very, very welcoming. We, I think we are stalled. Okay. Ariel, how's your internet connection? Mine is great, if you can hear me. <laughs> okay. Hold on, is it me? Did Malo, all of you there is internet. Else? There is internet okay. in Malot, so don't think that this is uh... No problem. Let's admit everybody in here. Sometimes it happens. Listen, whenever I'm doing Zoom, I'm always We're like, still here. oh my gosh. Oh, okay. You're still there. Okay. Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Is it going to, whatever. I know some people are still trying to get on. Hold on a second. Can everybody hear us? Yeah, loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Loud and clear. Good. Baruch Hashem. Okay, Ariel, I'm going to ask you to take over. Okay, great. My name is uh, Ariel. I've been living in Malot since I came, since I finished high school. I grew up in Los Angeles and uh, came to learn here in Yeshiva, and I ended up staying for a very long time, uh, minus minus about two years. When after I got married, we lived in Yerushalayim area, and uh, we're just thrilled to make Malot our home. I mean, uh, this is this is this has been my home since I came from America, basically. Uh, we have kids in all the educational systems. My son's in the high school Yeshiva. My daughters are in the day school. My little kids are in, in the Ganim. And um, I, don't, I don't know even where to start. You know, this is, this is for me home in all, in all sense of the word. Um, warm community, shul, yeshiva, a normal community with normal, healthy people. Um, you know, they're talking about the distance from Yushalayim. I never, I never felt far away from anything. I think that as, as uh, time has uh, progressed, you know, there's been more and more building. There's mall here new roads, you know, you just, and I never felt far from anything in the sense that like, oh, I'm missing out on something really big, you know, okay, fine. So, you know, vacation, you want to go to Yushalayim, you want to go, you know, you want to go other places, see other people, but, but really everything is very centrally located. Um, we, we are happy with the education that our children are getting, um, you know, just a regular mainstream Israeli education. Um, I don't know, kind of questions, maybe. Uh, I feel like, um, Tell me about like the public transport. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, we have two cars. Let's just put it that I work, I work in Akko, which is about a 35 minute commute. Uh, my wife is a nurse in the Naharia hospital, which is about a 15 minute commute. And we need to have two cars. Um, public transportation, there is, there are trains that run from anywhere in the center of the country up to Naharia. And then from there, there are buses that go to Malot. It's about a, I don't know, half hour bus ride. The ride from Malot to Naharia is about 15 plus minutes. Yosef, go get in the pajamas. Yeah, I'm, we're, we're also in pajamas here. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> the little ones are sleeping. Um, and uh, so it's, a bit of, it's about a 15, 20 minute car ride from here to Naharia. But on bus, it'll take a little bit longer, maybe about 40 minutes. Um, but again, keep in mind, there's, you know, there's a new, new road six, which is basically, you know, crosses all across the country. They build a Northern segment and they're still building more Northern segments, which will eventually make it all the way up to Tzomet Kabri, which is right around the corner from us. Um, so there's plenty of people that commute, uh, by train, by car. Um, I don't know, Kim, why don't you tell me out with questions and that'll kind of, we'll be able to, to okay, tell me, I'm thinking about what people would you said um, the school system. Tell me a little yeah. bit about the schools. Okay, great. Like how I mean, many we... are they? Do, do, do the kids, do the local kids stay in my lot or do they commute outwards? Like, like everybody, where do people every, go? Everybody, everybody stays in, I mean, everybody. So, some right. people choose to go out, but the vast majority of people stay in my lot. Uh, there's a high school yeshiva which opened about oh, 10 yeah. years ago, which is, you know, really on the, it's really on the, on the rise, it's successful. My son comes home happy every day from school, which is not, uh, you know, for an eighth grader, it doesn't always happen, which I'm actually very happy about. Um, you know, the, 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 obviously the elementary schools, are, you know, everybody stays close by. It's walking distance, maybe a six or seven minute car ride. I mean, I kind of, I kind of sometimes think about how my parents used to bus us around from in Los Angeles. You know, it'd be a 20 minute car ride just to get to, to school and back from school. And it's like, you know, here it's, I'll you know, I tell my kids, you know, you're walking to school. I don't, I don't have time to drive you. And they, and they walk to school and that's totally, totally cool. So from that respect, everybody's in school here. The gun name, the kindergartens and the, the preschool are all, you know, basically on every corner of every street, there's another gun, uh, you know, an area gun, which is from the, from the local municipality. Uh, obviously we send all of our kids to religious schools. There's also non-religious schools and religious schools. There is also a Haredi uh, school system. I think it's a more of a Shas leaning school system. So I don't have that much information about that, but I know that there's also, that also exists uh, around here. We're so. losing you again. All right. No, we got you. Okay, good. Oh, good. I'm here. No, I, I'm, I think I'm here. And am where, here? where yeah. am I? Kim, I think we're losing you. No? Who's getting lost here? Is anybody there? Yeah. Yes, Are we alive? Um, oh, we're good. Okay, fine. So then somebody asked also like about the um how long is the train from Tel Aviv to Naria? Tel Aviv to Naria. An hour and 40 minutes. I, there you go. The okay. rabbi will tell us. Excellent. And someone also asked another question. Is the is there an, an inner city bus service? Yeah. Yeah. There is. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. And it takes you to like where, like if you took it right out, like you go to like the supermarket, if you someone needed. Yeah. Where do you guys do your most of your shopping? Um, there's two or three markets here in Malot. I sometimes shop in Naharia on the way home from work because Rami Levy is a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's irre I mean irrelevant. I I can get everything I need right around the corner. It just depends on how big of a shopping I want to do. Is the Dati Me community like specific to uh, a certain location or, or is it throughout Marlot and the same <coughs> the Anglo community? Um, it's mainly centralized in one area, but I think now it's kind of expanding because there's, you know, thank God the community is growing. So I think mean, Rav Khalil will actually help us out with this one, but uh, there's definitely a growing community. The, the Dati area and the, the amount of shoals that there are here is also expanding there's a, a young families minion that opened up in one area there's another neighborhood that's being built and as the neighborhoods are being built there's also shoals that are being built in each area to to facilitate the people that are moving in there um so that from that respect there's uh, you know it's, it's it's kind of growing but uh and even even the even the different areas are not so far from one another meaning it's not like you know it's not like living in, I don't know, living in the five towns and walking to, to Manhattan or something like that. It's, uh, 
it's all centrally located. No, Rav Kaleer, you wanna share? No, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe you can speak about special education because someone asked a question about special education. Is there a system in, in Ma'alot? What do you say? I think, I think there is. I'm not that well versed in special education. Um, meaning, I know that there is a, there is a hostel here of Merkaz Kochav, but I don't think that's right. there's a there's a there's a hospital uh, there's a there's a special needs hostel down the block from our street down the block from my house. And in and Kfar I know Vadim, that, there is one, I think. Kfar Vadim. Right. And in and within the day schools, within the day schools, they have they have certain uh, classes that are again. I don't know what special education means, meaning to what extent, but there's definitely what we call a kitat um, shiluv or things like that, which are children that have more specific educational needs or educational setbacks that they give them more more specialized care and attention that definitely exists i know that that exists here in malot it also exists where i teach in akko and i think in in every city they have they have classes like that yeah. um so that that i think for sure What's it, Marty, i'll add a few things okay yes hi so first of all and nasi and uh, david welcome back we kept them busy don't worry Mm -hmm. uh, my name is David Kalir. I live in Ma'alot. It's at my 36th year in Ma'alot. Just after I uh, got married in 1986, we moved to Ma'alot. You spoke about uh, affordable, uh, so it's true. The reason that we are in Ma'alot is because we didn't have enough money to rent a, an apartment in Jerusalem. I studied in Yeshivat Kotel in, in 1983. And since then, we are in Ma'alot, except for four years, in Shlichut in Toronto, Canada, 1993 to 1997. And I would say, I told David that the fact that we came back after living in Toronto, came, coming back to a small city again, to a small town, it means a lot. It means that we felt that that's our community. That's a, it's a very warm community and we liked it very much. And that's the reason that we came back. Many people told us as, as, as soon as we'll leave to Canada, we won't come back. So we did come back. And Baruch Hashem, we have six kids and many uh, grandchildren. And uh, mm -hmm. we love it. And maybe I'll tell you a little bit about um, the, as a, the importance of the yeshiva. We have a yeshiva that's there here, a very big yeshiva. Both uh, Ariel and myself, we studied in uh, this uh, yeshiva. And many people stayed and bought houses because of the presence of the yeshiva. And as we said before, the Jewish community is, uh, uh, by the way, you can ignore my English uh, mistakes. My father told me, speak English with mistakes, speak fluently. And I can assure you that my English is better, of your, better than your Hebrew. That's for sure. So <laughs> let's get back to what I said. Um, as I said before, I like this community very much. There are it's many kinds of people. I wouldn't say that everyone is the same. We have the Lumi and we have Haredin and we have uh, people who are Masotiim and we all live together. I wouldn't say that it's a, uh, it's a Jewish town, but I wouldn't call it a religious town. I mean, it's not Nebrak and it's not uh, Efrat or whatever, but it's a very nice uh, town, not too big, not too small. And we'll live uh, with other people peacefully. And that's what I can tell you. Right. I've noticed, I've noticed that in Malod, something that was different from uh, coming from Malay to Mim, where we're very close to Jerusalem, our surrounding uh, uh, neighbors that live nearby, um, we, we didn't really get, get along, but it's very different up here. Very peaceful, yeah. friendly. Correct. It was almost surprising how, how much so that, that's the case that the, the Jewish communities here and the Arab communities here really seem to have some synergy. Do you feel safe? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. When, you know, it's when we're in, you know, I don't wanna, you know, I love Mali Demim as well, but you, there, the red signs outside the city say do not enter at, you know, at risk of death, that, that you don't get that sense here at all, at all. In fact, we can drive to Tarshicha, right? David, can? Yeah, what? You can go to Tarshicha. Of course I go to Tarshicha. I run there, I jog there, I do jogging there in Tarshicha and Meilia, no problem. We're not afraid at all. 
We're not talking about 1975. The, there was a massacre here, as, as you all know. And we're not talking about the 80s. We're talking about 2021 or 22. We live here peacefully, uh, maybe during times of war, but that's uh, anyway, where we can feel it all over. But I, I suggest that we'll answer some questions in the chat. People ask questions. For instance, oh, wow. people ask me about the pricing. Maybe you'll speak about it. As I said mm -hmm. before, it's affordable here. You can. Uh, it's true that if I will sell my house here, I won't be able to buy a house in Tel Aviv. But who wants to live in Tel Aviv? Well, I prefer living here. Uh, very easy. Uh, what else? I can see that someone asked about um, what else. What's it like living so close to the border? I think yes. we don't really feel it. It's, 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 a, very, it it's, it's a very mountainous area. Um, so it's not like you feel the border, mm -hmm. you know, um, you don't I think see that if the you border. Live, if you live, if we, you live anywhere else in the country, you feel the Southern border much stronger than you feel the Northern border here. May yeah, I, mean, I know, 100%. I know, I know my, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law that live in Gush Etzion were running for their, uh, bomb shelters much more than I have. So I do want to, I do want to say that one of the things that we asked, um, some, some of uh, the folks up here before we moved here, I said, what's it like when there's an incursion from the North? What happens? So he said to me, he goes, you go south, people will open up, you just go south. I thought that was strange, but then, you know, that's what you do. That's what you do, actually. And, what and, is, and, 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 and on the flip side, people from the south have come up north during yeah. the during the past uh, issues that have been in the south. People have opened their houses here very, uh, we had, we had uh, less than a year ago, we had a family come for Shabbat. They came, they ate with us. They were so happy to be out of uh, Ash, Ashdod. And, uh, you know, so everybody's, you know, everybody tries to help somebody else. So yeah, it's yeah. good to be giving and not have to be receiving. And within within the city, David, if you don't mind me interrupting, uh, it's a sense. It's a it's a very warm place. You don't, you can walk the street. You don't get any. Our kids are out till what time? I mean, I mean, our kids are out in Bnei Akiva, coming home at like eleven thirty midnight, and you know they're walking with friends, but they feel totally safe and comfortable. So within the city, yeah, for within sure. the city, for sure. It's it's kind of like um, a small town. You kind of get that. I'm just going to share a really quick story. Um, when we first moved here, we went to Mr. Panim to change the address on our Tudasu card. And you're supposed to bring your contract when you move, just so they have proof of your address. But I forgot to bring my contract. And we just said we moved to Mali. He said, oh, don't worry. You don't need your contract. I know who you are. I know where you moved to. I know your address. Like it's a small town. Everyone kind of knows each other, and not just with the Anglo's, the Israelis, and uh, the, the Israelis too. And that's what I was saying before we got cut off. Because the Anglo community is smaller, I find that the Israelis are very welcoming and very really trying to make us feel comfortable. My Israeli neighbor brought me a cake when we first moved in. Uh, we got invited out to an Israeli family for Shabbat. Um, we got Corona and the Minion came and, and the to minion outside came of our house. Right in front of our house. You know? and Yeah, really, really wonderful people. And the Anglo community has been so warm and so welcoming to us. They prepared meals for us when we first got here. And then we got sick and I wouldn't dare ask anybody two weeks after we just got meals for meals again, even though we really needed it. But people just offered people came and dropped food off and without even asking i felt really lucky to be here people were just i want to answer some of these oh. questions so is the area hilly or is it easy is it easy? so what's kind of nice and mali to mean where we're from originally is also a very mountainous hilly sort of place it is hilly here but it's like the way israel sort of builds they have like these long you know you know levels almost kind of like you know various levels so you can get around I got a bike, not using as much as I thought I might, but I got a bike and you can literally take, you know, drive around no problem. It's really nice. <clears throat> so no, it's it's both flat and hilly, but I'd say in general, it's more or less hilly. It's hilly, but it's, you know, most of Israel is hilly and you get used to it. Is there land available to buy a house, specifically areas 500 to 1,000 square meters? So I think that we do have a, a small deck. Do you know where my load is? It's right. east of Naharia, so it's all the way up there. It's up there, but it's 20 minutes from the beach, and uh, 20 Naharia has a, a train, so that's 20 minutes. If you drive out there, you can take a train connected to Tel Aviv. Um, it's, right. Yeah, it's not as far as it sounds. Right, and while while 
you can get everything you need within the, within the city. There's a beautiful mall here. I don't know if David's, or David or Ariel mentioned this already. There's great shopping. There's plenty of supermarkets to, to shop at. You're not, you don't have any lack there at all. Um, and all the while that Amazon is, has free shipping from $65 to $75, and you can just you know continue your take advantage. amazing take advantage. Yeah, my wife but you, has but, been piling but you up. Also have, but you also have like, like um, um, Naharia, Mm -hmm. and other cities that are, you know, you're not it's far from, from Carmel, minutes Carmel has a huge shopping center, which is only about 15 to 20 minutes away. The big center in Carmel, which is absolutely humongous. Right. So um, the point is that you, you don't, you don't, you don't have to leave the city, but there's a lot of stuff you could do outside like, the city. We are up North, but we're not isolated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to say from the pictures that I've seen, because I haven't been there. I actually was, when I was many, many years ago, I actually was on a kibbutz very close to Akko. So I had come up to Naria and all that area. And it's just, I just remember it being so green and luscious and beautiful. And it just so, it's just such a aesthetically, like just very pleasing to the eye. It, it just a beautiful, beautiful place. Scenically, it's stunning up there. Yeah. And the yeah, beaches, so of Na, beaches of Naria are just gorgeous beaches. 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes and you're at like these turquoise gorgeous warm beautiful uh, beaches so there's a question that we didn't really get a, a is there development happening to buy land and build absolutely we actually have a, a small presentation i was trying to say that before i don't know if this is the right time we but... can we can totally whenever marcy's ready i will share the screen and then you okay. guys can do well, your whatever yeah, you can. You want to we do it share, now? We, okay, yeah, we can share our screen. So now we also have a, a small video that might not play well, but if it does play well, it does show a little bit of the area. With that, does anybody have any? Let's try it. Try it. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. share. Okay, oh, come on. I did. I did share. I did give you the option to share. So let's see. Okay, one second. You guys um, seeing our screen? Yeah, we can see you. Yeah. Yes, Marcy and her hot hat. Yep. Okay, okay, let, okay, let me uh, let me go to present mode here. Can you hear it? No. David, you need to share the audio. Oh. The audio. I don't know how to do that. So what's this? Here you go. The... I gotta move this though. On your zoom. Yeah. One second. Where's the audio here? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. No. Yeah. Uh, Ariel, do you know? Check on your zoom. If you click on, if you click on, uh, I think a video, there should be a. Oh, I haven't done this in a while. Yeah, go go to the zoom. Marcy, you, could it. you could just talk. You could just talk while the video is going. Lo chashu, lo chashu. We'll go to the next next slide. Okay. Okay. I just want to say we can also send this out to everybody later on, so don't oh, worry. Yeah. Okay. So why we chose Malot? So pretty much what we just discussed, but we were looking for something a little different. Um, <laughs> Mali the meme is beautiful, but it's a desert, and we. We were looking for more of a green beauty, especially David being from Seattle. He really missed that outdoorsy and green. And um, we were looking to buy something and Molly Dameen was getting a little bit expensive. Um, Marcy, can, I, can, can you go back? Can you go back one slide for a second? Mm -hmm. I just want to say that all of us that live here, we all either are, you can either see our houses from this picture or our houses can see that lake. So it's not like, this is not like a, you know, some kind of fake picture. We all live around this lake. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the morning, you can have your morning jog around this lake and in the evening, you can have your evening walk around this lake. This is not something that's like, you know, from the fairy tales. So it's just important. That this no, is it's really beautiful. We see it from this, our this is, is like what, you, so. what you see here is what you get. No, no strings attached. Right. OK, so um, I saw there were some questions about building projects and apartments. So there are some new building projects going on. Um, this building project is right um, near the lake. And it will have a beautiful lake view. Uh, this is also right in, it's in a great location, about a five minute walk from the shul. And um, they, there aren't that many apartments left. Right now they do have garden apartments available. 
and four bedroom apartments. When are they gonna be done? Oh, I'm sorry, this should be done August, 2022. So in a couple of months. So anyone who's planning Aliyah soon and may be interested in Malot, um, this, so here's a sample, oops, go back. Here's a sample of a four bedroom apartment um, with a mere passat. This is 134 meters. And just for those who don't think in meters, uh, meters about three feet. So you can try to do the math. And these are starting at 1.4 million shekels. It's beautiful construction, brand new. Um, and living up here, it is a little less expensive than being in the Merkaz when you're in Jerusalem. And they do also have um, garden apartments with five bedrooms. Five bedroom garden apartments are starting at 2 million shekels. And again, these will be available this summer. So this would be a basic idea of what your view would be. As Ariel said. Yes, as Ariel said, it's not fake. And these aren't um, Google photos. We actually took these pictures and this is something that you would see from those and, apartments. And what you're looking at is like the morning sunrise view. So what happens is in Malot from where we're living, you're getting the morning light. It's really beautiful. And around just afternoon, you, you get the shady side, so it's really, really nice. This is another building project in Malo. It's a little further out. Um, it's five minute drive. A five minute drive, maybe 20, 25 minute walk from the Anglo community. But um, this, the the this is a neighborhood called Yafenov. It's, um, they haven't even begun the project yet. So if you're looking for an investment or if you're looking to move as a community or as families together and create your own, this is a great opportunity. So these will be done two years after signing. Like I said, they haven't even begun. They just have a big lot of land and they'll be starting soon. It happens to be a beautiful neighborhood as well. Um, if you were looking at that picture, if we go back, like you can't really see it, but if you see my cursor, it would be like right over here, like to the right. It's, it's, it's not far, you can almost see it from our house basically, but it's another mountainside over basically. But like I said, if, <clears throat> if you're planning maybe just an investment or moving as a community or families together, this is a great opportunity. They have three bedroom apartments starting at 1.1 million shekels. So this is an example. As you can see, it's really beautiful. Um, the prices are very fair. Is this the meter? This? Uh, the, this is 103 meters. And you get an idea what it's like here. It's got three bedrooms. It has an ensuite for the master and a nice size mirror passat. They also do have four bedrooms that are starting at 1. Uh, 1.4 million with a garden, and they have five bedrooms as well. So this is a great opportunity. I don't want. I don't want. And maybe interjecting, but when we looked at Malot, was it in, in the in the in the fall? We looked at the first project. No, it wasn't fall. It was in April, and that's the fall. No, April was spring. Right. Oh, sorry, spring, my bad. Okay. okay. Um, oh, right. And back then the prices were lower because they were not close to being done. As buildings get closer to being complete, the prices go so up. So it was like 1.4, I think, back then, uh, well, for back like what's now closer to 2 million. So give you an idea, these prices do seem to go up as you get closer. I think Kim probably knows this better than I do. So we go on to the next slide? But yeah, go on to the next. Okay. So this is a home already built. Um, I just wanna give you an idea of what you can get in Malo. Now I'm gonna show you two homes that are already, that I have here available, but I want you to know, um, for some people who are asking about prices, there is something for every budget, I believe here in Malo. You can get a three bedroom apartment for under a million shekels, and you can also get yourself a nice, beautiful private home. So there's something really for every budget. And here is a really beautiful, completely renovated, five bedroom house. This is a two floor apartment in a small boutique apartment building with only four apartments in the building. It has an entrance from the street level, so there are no stairs. And as you can see, there's a beautiful renovated kitchen. They've got um, stairs leading up to, uh, up, upstairs to the bedrooms. Um, if you can, uh, the I just want to show right here, they have a master suite on the downstairs level and the kids' four bedrooms upstairs. Right, and right, and yeah. this, this is asking 1.6 million shackles in a great location. It's five minutes from where we live. Not even, it's three minutes from where we live, basically. Same neighborhood. It's same neighborhood, a few minutes from the shul. 
And really all you need to do is pack your bags. Everything is completely redone. What are you seeing over here? This is the roof, which they've created a nice outdoor space. They have two mirror passets and the rooftop. And um, like I said, it's five bedrooms, this is 1.6. So I just wanna give you some ideas of what you can get. This is something uh, really beautiful. This is a private home surrounded. This house. I love this house. <laughs> um, it's surrounded by lots of land. It's a beautiful, um, it, first of all, it's right near the lake. As you can see, there's the lake again, real picture. It's even closer this time. And this is not far from the new construction. It's actually right near the new construction building. And what's nice is because there's a new building, they created a new road. So you can literally now drive right up to this house um, on a brand new road. It's 20 meters away. So this is a beautiful two-story uh, four bedroom house and uh, four bedrooms upstairs with a living room, which you can convert into a fifth bedroom if you need. And it's really open, really airy. As you can see, the it's got a lot of outdoor space with- Talk about the trees. Lo okay. Lots of trees. There are fig trees and lemon trees, palmetto trees and clementines. It's really a beautiful property. And this is 2.1 million shekel. Okay. Now, I just wanted to give you an idea that there really is a variety of pricing here. And I think there's something to suit every <coughs> budget. Now, Malo is really a wonderful community. We've only been here a short time, but we are really happy to be here. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I cannot believe how amazing those properties are. If you compare them to other like Jerusalem prices, it's really crazy. It's, it's, and for people that really want more of a suburban lifestyle and they want the green, then I think it really makes, you know, it just so much more affordable and, and, and quality of life as well, if that's what you're used to. Big, a lot of my, a lot of problems, a lot of people coming are so stressed about having to fit, you know, into a tiny apartment. And I think that this really does solve a lot of people's, you know, like desire to live in a suburb and get affordable housing. And of course, they've got such a wonderful community as David and Marcy spearheading, hopefully a whole new crowd of people coming into the community. So I think that's gonna be really awesome. One question I wanted to ask is, what kind of synagogues are there in Malot? Jump in. Who's David. jumping in? David. Uh, there are many kinds of synagogues. We have one main shul, which is called the Rambam Synagogue. I prefer saying a shul, not a synagogue. Okay. Uh, we have Rambam, and most of our community doesn't there. And there is a, there is a shul of the um, um, youngsters, I would say. They, I think it's in Yalom. Okay, yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah. Next door, next door to Yalom. Next door, next door to Yalom. Yalom is school. the boys' elementary school. Yes, that's yes. where it's I am. That's where I am in the morning after I drop my kids off. It's it's yeah. a great minyan, very nice. Other shiurim in English. There are shiurim in English, but uh, I told I remember myself speaking to David, and I told him if someone wants to observe, not to observe, to to get along with Israelis, he should study. Uh, Torah in Hebrew. That's what I told him. That's but right. there are shiurim in English too. Yes, That's there are. Um, we had some questions about rental prices. Mm -hmm. um, I see that someone, I see it's been answered. Four rooms, about 2,700 shekels. Uh, yeah, you can get four rooms. It would be a three bedroom. So you can get the, around that price. You can get four bedrooms and 3,000 to 3,500 shekel. Yeah. How's the dollar doing lately, guys? Not good. Not so don't, good. Don't, that's not a good subject to bring up, David. That's really <laughs> so. Not, there good. are some retirees. Yes, retiree yeah. peasants. There, there are retirees here as well. There's families, retirees. Um, I think there's a real mix. I don't know if we spoke about schools because we got cut off for a bit, but we did. Um, as uh, elementary schools go, we have a boy in Kita Aleph, and I am very, very impressed with uh, the school here. It's called Yahalom. 
they really try to make the kids happy. The first day of school, they had a juggler and they had music and cotton candy. I mean, they really try to make the kids feel good. And he's coming home learning. He really is learning a lot. And I'm really impressed with the school here. Yeah, I think in general, we've noticed uh, a higher level of, uh, of studying for the kids here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little more challenging, I would say, as well, which I'm happy to see the kids are being stretched a little bit. Are there who game for the children? Like, is it a, a community center? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah there's, there's, there's a matnas, which is kind of a community center. There's also a, a music conservatorium, which a lot of kids go and have uh, private lessons there. Uh, my son played baritone for a period of time, guitar. My daughter was playing flute. Um, there's karate chug. There's a sports club. Um, soccer. I'm probably missing out something. Other other thing. There's a dance. There's a dance hook for for religious girls that my daughters went to for a while. Also before uh, before Corona kicked in. Um, you, you just get a sense here that there's a lot of outdoor living here. So it's yeah. just it's a very green, outdoors, very quiet at night, you know, type of place. But um, the kids are very active from what we can see. There's also a new like a new gym or machon kosher with separate men's and women's hours, separate classes for men and yeah, women. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I don't know what else Somebody asked a question about agricultural space near, uh, near buying their home. Mm -hmm. What does that mean exactly? Like a like a little like place, to, like for a garden or for? We have we have near the lake, right? They have little areas where you could do a little gardening. I think. Well, that's a uh, free actually, but um, you can yeah, garden over there. They have what's called the Chava Chaklait, which is like a like a community gardening area. But uh, I don't know if that's how big is it. I'm just curious. It's it's kind of community sized. It's something. It's not huge. It's kind of everybody that doesn't have a garden is able to have a little area of land and develop it. It's really nice. Panina has a question about what's it like for Anglo kids integrating into the Israeli system. Um. I, I think that once you let the community know that you're coming, people will make it, will go out of their way to have their kids contact your kid. Now, when we were moving in, we had met some people before and my kids got phone calls and people were very accepting, very welcoming. And I'm talking about a teenager. I mean, you take a 15 year old into a new community. It's not easy, but she's adjusting really well. And the kids have been very warm and welcoming to her. Temperature range. Not, 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 not only that, Marcy, I'll add one more thing. I think that as, as you know, as my kids, you know, go, go, they're in school. I see that there's more and more Anglo kids in each grade, which I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they don't, even if they don't speak Hebrew between one another, like, you know, my son speaks Hebrew. I mean, my son speaks English. We speak English at home, obviously, although he was born here. But uh, there's more and more Anglo kids that I didn't like realize. I was like, oh, yeah, your family is American and your family is American. And, you know, so it's not, it's not as daunting and as kind of... Uh, as scary as, as I think that the people think it is. And I'll just right. say one, 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 more, one more note about the educational system. Yeah. I think that also the fact of the matter that there's not, there's not a huge choice is actually better. You know, I have, uh, one second. It's fine. I have a sister-in-law and brother-in-law that live somewhere else and they have maybe, you know, like 20 or 30 of the best schools in the country and the horror stories that they tell, like, you know, I'm, I'm appalled to hear. I think that, I think that when you have something small and it's community and, you know, the teacher is a guy that lives next door and the principal lives three doors down. It, it adds something that everybody's kind of in this together. And that's, right. that's, not, that's not found in all places. Yeah. I, want, I want to say something also about this is that um, we've noticed that a lot of the kids here in Malo, their, their English is on a very high level for some reason. Very high level. They're, they're, they're learning English in the classes. So our kids are telling us that even the Israelis, like I, we're, we're getting the English like, uh, like vocabulary tests and there's like some pretty difficult words that they're learning. So it's, it's no joke. They actually understand English pretty well. You want to talk about the temperature? Um, well, we're still new here, uh, but... It gets cold. Eh? It gets cold We've here. been told it gets cold. It doesn't snow, but we've been told it gets But you cold. can drive up to, a, up to the spot. Or, or Mayron, and you can... Or Mayron, if which you is not far. If you want it to doesn't see. snow from some to time. Yeah, it does. Oh, it does? Yes, of oh. course it does. And I would say it's a little humid in the summer because we do get a little bit of the ocean humidity. Would you but, agree? Not, but not, it's not, not like not anywhere as bad as anywhere on the coastal area. That's I said a, a little bit. A little, little bit, bit. A little bit. You, you Listen, I work I work bit. in Akko. When you leave here and there's like, you know, a, a, fifth, a 10, 10, not 10, 10 degrees, but maybe like, you know, a six or seven or eight degree drop. When you get back home, it's a big difference, especially in the yeah. summer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's not dry like Mala de Domain. 
We talk about the beautiful lake because I re- somebody mentioned you can't swim in the lake. So what is the lake lake for? Just- it's an artificial lake. <laughs> yeah. At the la- at the lake they have they have bumper that not bumper cars. They have uh, go karts. They paddle have boats. paddle boats. They have like this climbing the, thing. The internationally renowned cro- ropes climbing. Uh, right, ropes thing. climbing thing. They have like six or seven. They have ducks. Yeah, our kids. We uh, go there to feed the ducks. Uh, yeah, we bring our bread and we just feed the ducks. It's sometimes. awesome. You just go down to the lake and it's beautiful. It, I think there's a lot of work that they can also do there or they're planning on possibly there's doing. A, there's a lot the of plans. There's a lot of plans for the lake. We hope that they're going to get carried out. Please so. God, it's such a beautiful place. It really is. Is there a, is there a community pool at all? Yeah, around um, the lake there, there is. is. Yeah. Oh, that's in lake, great. In the lake there is. I mean, next door to the lake. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's excellent. Wonderful. And it's a membership that you just sign up and you can, was it free? It's not a free pool, obviously. I don't think it's free. For David uh, Sabin, I guess, um, about the plots of land, we did cover that a little um, bit. No, he means plot of land. Um, I don't know, but I could look into that. Um, there probably is, but I, I can look into oh, that. We did not cover plots, he's right. How cold is it? Um, I don't think it gets Canada cold here. Uh, maybe some, maybe Ariel, you can tell us how cold it actually gets. From Los Angeles, so anything below, you know, 50 degrees is freezing for me, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that. It's it's cold. I mean, it gets probably in Celsius. It could get like you know, I don't know, four or five degrees is cold. Yes. I, I don't know. That's... I I don't know if this was brought up yet. Maybe we missed this. But people thinking about going north. One of the biggest concerns I've heard since we moved here is what about jobs? Okay, I want to bring it up because I think it's an important point to discuss. And with the advent of COVID and a lot of people working remotely, I think that does open up a, a lot of possibilities for people. Um, I myself am in business development for high tech companies and I can work from my house and it's really opened up, you know, this possibility was not really possible for us just a couple of years ago. So um, just want to, you know, throw that out there. There are also um, opportunities. Um, uh, in- you know, this is not about my love, but as Olim in general, there's a lot that you can take advantage of. Um, Miswara Klita will pay for you some type of training, of, I think 70 or 80 percent of training and you know, it's a lot of people will take it as an opportunity to do something they've always wanted to do or learn a new trade and, you know, start their own business. So definitely it's something, you know, for to not, like I said, not just related to Malo, but in general, something to, you know, look into. Any other questions? Kim? Okay, hold on. Oh, we still got people coming on the call. Um, no, I'm just, I, I just, I think I can't wait to come and visit you guys. It just sounds so incredible. Tell me what I would do if a person wants to come and see and check it out. How do we get there? Um, Sorry. Somebody wants to check it out, reach out to us, and we would be happy to show you around, give you a tour, uh, meet some of the locals and try to arrange a shabbat like they did for us i mean that was kind of thursday night call we were there the next day from like for example from jerusalem there's a but where does the bus go to where would somebody get off if they're coming from tel aviv or do you know where would you Um, get to naria and then have to take a there's there's a direct direct bus there's a direct bus from yushalam to carmiel (laughs) from carmiel either you know take a taxi which is i'm gonna take a taxi you could probably take another bus uh, if you're taking a train, you could take a train from Yerushalayim to Tel Aviv, and then from Tel Aviv to Naharia. Then from Naharia, you'd have to make your way to Mahalot also, which is not the end of the world. Um, those are the, That's public transportation, or you could come and rent a car and then enjoy the scenic route. Is there any bus, any bus that stops on the way or not? Not yet. On the way from where? I, on any of the routes. Like, is there a bus it says, that stops? It says, it says in the Midrash that when, when Mashiach is going to come, that... Uh, that Yerushalayim is going to reach all the way to Damascus, to Damascus. So when that happens, then we'll be kind of halfway okay. along the way. But until then, I don't think so. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, see, there's a question amazing. here. Um, Where does the Anglo community fit in religiously? I mean, I don't know how people feel about titles, but I do feel like this is a Torani community where definitely Torah is an important part of people's lives. Yeah. Yeah, I would second that. It's... Um, you know, there's. I also have a difficult time with all the different hierarchies of uh, of uh, definitions, but um, clearly, 
the the Jews that are Anglo living here typically seem to be <laughs> like Torah is really a centerpiece of their life for sure. Can I can I make one more point about that? I mean, I, I learned yeshiva for many years, but with all that said, I think that it's also nobody. I don't think anybody really feels like um, threatened or or you mm -hmm. know looked down on by somebody else. I mean, I think it's I think Torah is very central. I think you know a lot of people, yeah. a lot of shurim, a lot of people spend a lot of hours learning, but I don't think that anybody feels that somebody's like, you know, looking down on them and, and judging them. And, and if you are like this or you're not like this, I don't, I don't really right. think that it matters to the other people around. And I know, you know, we have people in our community that they don't learn as many hours as the next guy and, and really doesn't interest so many, so many people. So that's a very comforting feeling, I think, on all, from all ends. It's a very, very warm community. That's the best way to put it. The people here are warm. I don't know. It's the culture here. So, and it, it permeates everybody from what I can tell. Mm -hmm. So, and like I said earlier, it's not just the Anglo community. Like we've been really welcomed by the Israelis as well. Wait, you're sorry. I was muted. Um, <coughs> any other questions? Please feel free to reach out to um, to Marcy and to David for real estate. And Marcy is going to also be taking us on a journey up north, Bezrat Hashem. So we're going to be seeing other places that are close to Malot. Although we really feel that Malot is a great place, especially with such awesome people. And they are looking to build the Anglo community there. So I think from... An affordability point of view, I'm just shocked at the prices. It's just looks like gorgeous real estate for an incredible price. Um, so I think that anybody who's looking to maybe even invest or make Aliyah, I think that this is a really safe bet. And I'm happy to run through prices with you to have a conference call with myself and Marcy if you're interested. We have sold more real estate in the last 18 months over Zoom and WhatsApp than I did in 10 years, just to give wow. you how crazy, crazy the prices, how crazy the real estate market is, has gone right now. So even if people are not necessarily making Alia right now, they're like, we need to think of the future. So I think that, especially in some of the new projects, if you're on the fence about it, this could be you know, a safe investment because it's not crazy expensive either. So um, please reach out to Marcy and make appointments to speak to her. We're happy to do conference calls with you. Um, and we're going to start doing the series every week now again. Bezrat Hashem Blineda. Not sure what's happening next week, but we're going to start doing it again because I think it's very, very important to show the Jews in the diaspora all of you guys, that there really is a place in Eretz Israel for every single Jew. And this is your home. We look forward to welcoming you back. The time is now. And um, start, start the journey. Start the journey. And uh, anything you need, please be in touch with us. And uh, we're happy. Marcy, I'll send you the list of all the people that were signed up for the call. And we will send out the presentation. And uh, we'll take it from there. Also, anybody on the call, if you want to, if, if there's a community that you want us to investigate and you want us to look into up north, let us know. And check out the YouTube uh, YouTube channel, Kim Bash Real Estate. We have a lot of communities which we have already covered. So um, we look forward to seeing everybody soon. The we're open. The skies are open. Not going to go into whether you've been vaccinated or not vaccinated. I hope that everybody can come. That's, I could, that's if, I could, if I could if I could if I could quote if I can quote you Kim we are waiting for you with open arms exactly exactly anyway sending lots of love from from Eretz Israel from Jerusalem I live in the old city and my home is open to anybody who wants to come for a meal over Shabbat I don't have sleeping space but we can figure that out if anybody wants to come I live five minutes away from from the Western Wall from the Kotel so I'm very privileged to be to, to be living here also quickly before we end off I want to introduce you to, to Devorah Benarash who works with me and she runs my Ramat Beit Shemesh um, office and we've seen just explosion of the real estate market in Ramat Beit Shemesh. Ramat Beit Shemesh has always been a very soft landing uh, place for people to come. It's very Anglo. It's also become much more diverse. It's not as cookie cutter uh, religious as it used to be. It's much more open and also a very great 
landing pad for people to come to. So if anybody's interested in Ramat Beit Shemesh, please speak to Devorah. We have some great opportunities there as well. It's definitely not as um, inexpensive as my lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say that in a nice way, but it's it's really, you, you know, the same house that we just saw would probably cost, I would say about four and a half million to five million shekels. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Affordable was the word you're looking for, Kim. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Had a senior moment there. But yeah. Okay. So sending lots of love and we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you so much for all your time, everybody. I'm going to stay on a little bit at the end. David Marcy, stay on. Divorce, stay on. Anybody wants to ask, open floor to anybody wants to ask. We'll stay on for a few more minutes. And uh, again, thank you so much to David and Ariel also for coming on. Just a very special community. Yep. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. Uh, Hope to see you thank soon. you. Hi, Melissa. How are you doing? Thank you. Good to see you. Good, Good to, to see, see you, David, you. Marcy, everybody. Thanks so much for all the information. Um, be in touch about all that stuff. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Good to see you, Melissa. Yeah. Is that uh, Rabbi Eli Fader there? I don't want to put him on the spot, but he's Michael Russo and a good friend who joined us from New York, so... I'm happy mm -hmm. to see that he was here. Jordan. Jordan. Here. Yeah. Good to see okay. you, Jordan. Jordan's going to Pardis Khanna. Ah, Beautiful. cool. We did a great, we did a great call on Pardis Khanna. It's a wonderful community as well. On the train line, become very popular as well. So, but the prices have gone up. I was just talking That's to one of the bit. brokers there that it's very hard to find real estate right now in Pardis Khanna. So the people who couldn't necessarily afford Zikron Yaakov went to Paris Khana. So, but Paris Khana has become very um, up and coming as well. So anyway. Okay, everybody. Laila Tov. Marcy and David, great job. Thanks so much. Laila Tov. Good night, everybody. Bye, Good night. Bye.